Hello there, welcome back to Crafters TV. My name is Joe, and we are going to guide you through what I think has fast become one of your absolute favorite shows on the schedule. We are, of course, uh, talking about the craft along. Now, today's is extra special though, because it is a foiling craft along. Something that I know you guys have wanted and been asking for for such a long time, which is awesome. Now, foiling craft along. We couldn't do it without one man. And he is here with us. Craig, how are you? Hiya, Joe. I'm doing good, thank you. Really looking forward to this one. Always look forward to all the uh, craft alongs that we do. But this is one that even before we've started doing craft alongs, you were even at home just going, oh, it'd be good if we could foil along with you. Now, here's the opportunity that you can join me. And what we will do is let's show you what you're going to be making. If you go with the list that I'm going to go over in a moment. So we are going to be making this 8x8 box frame. However, if maybe you've not had a chance to get a box frame, you could equally use this as the front of an 8x8 card. It's entirely up to yourself. Or you might actually want it in a larger box frame. That's entirely up to you. So there's still a couple of options. But what you need, if you've not already seen the list beforehand, it went out the other day, I'm going to go through everything that you do need. This is what you're going to use if you're going to do it exactly how I'm going to do it. You might change things, that is absolutely fine. But here we go, what we are going to need to do the box frame, you will need your foil press machine, your Gemini Junior, your stitched edge oval dies, number three and number four, your p &E double-sided dies, you're also going to need your double-sided plates, you're going to need your pretty p &E's background stamp, your especially for you sentiment, call al tacky glue and the glue gel, your tape runner, and also an 8x8 box frame or card blank. Then your additional elements that you're going to need is your small guillotine or large one, your white stamping card, your gold shimmer paper craft and foil or any gold. You're going to be using your gold mirror card and navy A4 card stock, vellum paper, heat resistant acetate, 3D foam pads, gold ribbon, round about 6mm, navy ribbon, round about 3mm, and also some gems as well. So that's what you're going to need if you're wanting to actually make and construct exactly what I'm doing. You might want to change elements, you might want to change colours, that's completely up to you. The choice is entirely up to you, but it's going to be fun and it's going to be looking elegant no matter what you make. Uh, yeah, absolutely is. And as Craig said there, you know, you can play around with colours and stuff, absolutely. Uh, you've still got a few more minutes before we get started. So if you are still giving your uh, stuff, don't worry, you've got a few minutes before we get going. And remember as well, I know uh, a large proportion of you love to craft along in real time, which is fabulous because we can all see everyone's makes at the end of this craft along. But I know some of you like to watch it through first and then watch it back. If you want to do that, absolutely you can. You'll be able to view this immediately afterwards over on our website or wherever you're watching it. So Facebook or YouTube is there for you. The other great thing about it is as well that I am here for you, so uh, if there's anything that you need to Craig to recap at any point, uh, if you need Craig to slow down, any of the different things, just let me know in the comments. Our social media superstar for today is Colleen, and lots of you are already saying hello. Uh, Shelly's in from Michigan, Susie's here from New Orleans, Beth is here in upstate New York, I can see Suzette uh, joining us as well, and April saying good morning, so excited uh, for the craft along. Now, if you don't yet own the products that Craig has just taken you through, don't worry, as I said, it's not too late because uh, we've got the foil press itself available to you. It's only available in the UK at the moment, uh, but you're going to get in here absolutely everything you need. You get the foil press itself with the platform, you get some dies, uh, some stamp dies I should say, some foil stamp and cut dies, and then you're also getting all the other accoutrement that you need. You get the mat, uh, the grippers, the tweezers, uh, you're even getting foil in there to get you started. You get a full manual included in there also, and all as well as that, there are hours and hours and hours of foil press masterclasses available to you over on our website. If you're going for this today, not only will you get 100 bonus points, which is fantastic, Club Inspire Platinum members can pick that up for £80 today, which is brilliant. Now, something else I want to share with you is this awesome little starter collection that we've got. So if you've already got your foil press, we've put together a really lovely selection of essentials here for you. And what you're going to get included is you're going to get the paper pad first and foremost. These paper pads are awesome. This is the neutral tones that you're going to get in this one just here. 36 double-sided sheets 
It's 230 GSM, so it's a really cool all around weight for you. You're also getting the stag foil stamp uh, die in there, as well as some gold spangles, which in the UK has only recently been made available here in the UK, and you're getting a tape pen in there too. So you're getting absolutely uh, loads in there for that great price. Uh, you get that for $32 as a platinum member in the US, or £24 as a platinum member here in the UK, which is awesome. Uh, Karen says, good morning again. I really went to craft along, but I didn't get everything out yet. So I'll watch now and I'll craft later. I love the look of this creation. Do you know what you could do, Karen? You could just pause it and quickly run and get your stuff uh, and then catch up with us. It's completely up to you, but you've got the option uh, to watch it back whenever you like, which is also fantastic. Um, is it Craig? It's an all Craig, it's a Craig takeover today. It really is. And myself and Craig, we're here with Wake Up Corn Craft Vault. Oh, you've got this craft along. And then we'll also be back together again for Creative Cravings. Loads of stuff. There's loads in Creative Cravings tonight, isn't there, Craig? There is. There really is a lot of goodies as well. But what you keep in mind at the moment, if maybe you've never used a file press before, or you've never even seen it before by the end of this craft along we will always have that little bit of time so what we'll do is we'll show you how you can foil using your normal dies as well awesome. so keep that in mind too and also towards the, the end of the show after craig's craft along project we are going to do a bit of a foiling 101 hopefully so any foiling questions that you've got, generic foiling questions, obviously any questions as we go through about Craig's craft along, get them into me and I'll immediately pop them over to Craig. But any of your generic questions that you've got about foiling, I'll hold on to them and then after Craig's craft along, I'll then put all of those questions over to him. So if you're not crafting along with me, feel free to get those in as well. If you want to interact with us, of course you can do so. Crafters TV, if you're looking for us on Facebook, Crafters Companion over on YouTube, or send us a good old fashioned email if you want, studio at crafterscompanion.com code.uk and that's where I'm going to ask you and invite you to uh, send in pictures of your finished craft along as well. Right Craig, I am having a look at the comments here and it would appear that everyone is tickety-boo and set to go. Excellent, sounds good to me. So being the craft along you're going to do exactly what I'm doing at the exact same time and that means switching it on. So I've not even switched it on, well I've switched it on at the side but I've not switched it on with the main power button where it's actually heating up. So now that I've got it on at the mains what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it on there and then my low heat is on red so I'm going to tilt that so we'll be able to see it. Yours will see yours at home that is lit up red. So what we're gonna do, while that heats up, let's just pop that to the side, and then what we can then do is we can start to do a little bit of cutting for our initial layers, and then that just means that we are, um, we are multitasking. Believe it or not, some of us guys can actually do that. Not often, but we can't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some of your gold mirror card and navy card stock as well. You might want to choose other colors, that's up to you, but this is what we're going with when it comes to this box frame. Now, the uh, original lineup did say the small guillotine. If you've got your large guillotine, do pop that one out. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our gold card stock and we're gonna cut that one down to seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So we're going to cut all the way around. So if we make sure, I'm gonna make sure that I'm right up against that top edge. So this is now our first layer. What we can then do is bring in our navy. Now we're coming right down a whole inch. So we're coming down to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then we're going to cut this one in. So we're gonna go around all the way around. So this is then going to let you see that we've got a really good matting layer all the way around. Simply because if you are using a box frame, you're going to have that extra space between your first layer and the ins inside part of your box layer. That's why it needs to be really quite thick. So what we can do now is let's move our guillotine just out the way for a moment or two. Bring in your tape runner. So I've got mine here, and we're going to matting layer this one first off. So I'm gonna go in, and at this point, I'm not using any foam pads. We're gonna keep this base layer nice and flat. I have suggested the tape runner. You might want to be using any of your wet glues. For instance, this one here, going onto our mirror card, you might want to use your tacky, which is also up to yourself. 
get it as close to the middle as you can and then what we can then do is set this one to the side. That is our base layer and we can start to prep our acetate. So now that I can sit that one out of the way, bringing back in my guillotine for this one and I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring my acetate into play here. So I'm going with your heat proof acetate and I always say you can cut you can foil normal acetate, but to keep it very simple for anyone that's maybe new to the foil press, maybe you're a bit daunted by yours, you've got yours at home but don't know where to start, we thought we'll keep it simple when it comes to the layers. So now that I've got my acetate, what I want to do is I want to cut this to 5 by 7 So I'm going to go up to my 5 inch line, and then I'm going to pull out my extended arm, and then I'm going to cut this one up to the 7 inch here. And then what we can then do is we can then bring in our foil. Now, I originally, within my one, I used the gold and I popped that onto the list. But because we've got some of that gold spangle here, I thought we'll use that instead. So you, you might already have gold spangle, you might have gold shimmer, you might have gold, you might have rose gold, it's entirely up to you. Just for anyone that maybe is, uh, it does start to lag behind a little bit at any point in the craft along Cray, we will be taking regular Absolutely. breaks and recapping, won't we? So if you are thinking, oh, I'm not quite keeping up, don't worry, uh, because we'll have regular breaks and Craig will recap all the steps and the measurements for you as well. So we'll all get to the finish line together, Craig, won't we? We will. We absolutely will. So what we can then do is let's bring in your chosen background. So for this one, I've gone with the Pretty Peonies. So we can then take these ones. I did check beforehand. It is still on the website and in stock if uh, you decided you wanted to have a look at that. Now, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take... Now, my roll was actually a relatively new roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that excess off because there's a little bit of adhesive on the foil side. I'm not going to bin it, though. I will come back and use it at another time. Now, what I want to do is I want to cut my foil as close to the size as my background eye. So if I chop that one off here, and then I'm going to make sure, yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's have a look at the width. Yes, I'm happy with that as well. So what I can do is I can just pop these ones to the side. And then I'm going to bring in my foil press. Yours will hopefully, like mine, beat to say that it's ready. So we're going to bring in our layers. We're on green, which lets me know we are good to go. So for the background, with your acetate, what you're also going to need is a 300 GSM shim. So this is just our white stamping card that I've popped on the list. And what I'm also going to do, I'm going to reach over and I'm trimming this one down so that it's going to sit on top of our platform and that's going to be a nice shim. So let's move all that out of the way. So let's go back to our foil press now. And for your large background, with the acetate, I need to go up to 45 seconds. So we can go all the way up, right up to 45 seconds. I can then bring in my foil press plate. I'm going to pop that one into place there. Now, if you've been watching us for many, many weeks and months, you know I like to put my carbon plate over the top. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So that then, Joe's, that's then given this enough time to heat up that full foil press stamp it's going to be the right amount of time that it needs to put your foil in onto acetate in a moment or two. It does the countdown and it will also beep to let you know that it's done. Awesome. Um, lots of people watching this, lots of people crafting along with this as well, Craig, uh, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, yes, anything you need to know, uh, do let me know in the comments and I'll pop those over to Craig. If you haven't got everything yet, don't worry, everything is still available in the show for you too, so you're going to be able to watch this back at a later date. Absolutely. So what we can do then is that's perfect timing because that beeps to let us know that we're done. So what we can do is we can bring in our foil and it's shiny side down, always shiny side down. We're going to bring in our acetate. Now I have cut this to 5 by 7 the actual size of the background. However, we are away to come and trim this down even smaller. I'm going to put my shim over the top and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my top carbon plate. We're going to slide it out, so make sure we slide it out, don't lift it out. And then I'm using the junior here. We're going to feed that through. I always like to keep a hold of it until it grabs and then I let go. So we've done the time, we've done the heat, and now the pressure is binding all these together. 
so I can then bring this back into place. I'm going to lift all these ones so we'll be able to see if we get a corner here, if I put a little bit of white cardstock underneath, can we see all that foiling? Beautiful. Can we see all that gold, how intricate, even into all these parts here. Can you see, look at that, absolutely gorgeous. So what I'm then going to do is if I set that one to the side, don't bin this just yet because what we're going to do is we're going to use that later on. So we can then pop this to the side. Now I'm going to pop my uh, carbon platform back, my carbon platform, my foil press platform back in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that out of the way for the time being. What I am just doing is I am just removing the actual foil press stamp. If you are a bit heat sensitive, then you can be using the little grippers that you've got, but it's not overly hot for me. So I'm happy enough with that. Uh, do you, should we take a little break there, Craig? Would that, be a, would that be a good opportunity to have a pause there? I thought just in case anyone's got a little bit under foiling Absolutely. or over foiling, just in case anyone needs to refoil, let me know that you're keeping up. Seems that everyone is keeping up in the comments, Craig. Good, but, good, good. Uh, always good just to have a little pause, just to, for any stragglers, uh, lovely stragglers. We love all the stragglers. <laughs> we love all of our crafters. Uh, we really do. I'll tell you what else I'd like to know. Is Pam Craven watching today? Pam Craven, if you are here make yourself known uh, if you want to go for the foil press starter kit absolutely you can that is available for you as well uh, don't forget about that you're going to get the stag in there and you're going to also get that awesome neutral tones paper pad within there too i always see the neutral tones craig not the most exciting one but really an essential one isn't it because of those colorways it is it really really is such an essential one to pop within your uh, your collection because you can do simple layers if you want it looks really nice and it finishes off your layers just beautifully awesome you're gonna get a stag in there you're also gonna get some foil uh, and you're going to get a tape runner in there too don't forget as well over on the website i've got a promotion that we're running especially for this show 10 percent off of all foil press machine accessories. So if you fancied getting some more of those uh, little, I don't know what they're called, I call them squeezers. I don't know what they're called. If you needed more tweezers, mats, all of those uh, things, maybe uh, you need uh, a new platform. I know they don't go very quickly, but uh, things like top plate extenders, they are all on there for you, uh, which is absolutely awesome. So you'll be able to go and avail of all of those over on the website. Don't forget as well, big birthday uh, over on the website, Totally Tiffany uh, is celebrating 18 years, which is awesome. And in four days time on Sunday, there's going to be a Totally Tiffany takeover, which is not easy to say, but that is happening on Sunday. Uh, there's loads of awesome birthday deals over on the website. There's also lots of double points action uh, going on over there as well so do make sure you go and take advantage of that uh right craig i think uh we might be ready to um press on if if you are uh, i am if you are just make sure i haven't asked anyone to recap anything at the moment so okay perfect so what we can then do is now that we've got our bit of acetate foil let's take a little bit of um bits out the way so what we can do is we can then bring back in into our acetate that we've just foiled a moment ago. We then need to trim it down. So although that we have uh, already cut it to five by seven, what we're then away to do is we're away to trim it down that little bit more. And then this is going to be the backdrop for our frame. So what I need to do is once we've foiled our acetate, we're going to trim the background for this one here. So we're actually trimming it to a square. So we're going to four and a half inches by four and a half inches so what i'm doing to start with is i'm just following the end lines of my foiled acetate so the width of it is already at four and a half which is perfect and then we can come around again and do it to four and a half so we've got our lovely square so if i set that bit out of the way for the time being what we can then do is if we set that to the side, we're going to bring back in another bit of our gold cardstock. So I'm going to check to see if my little extra bit, oh no, it's four and a half by four and a half. So what we can do is we can just bring in another piece. Because the way that I try and work these craft alongs as well, Joe, is so that we use as little cardstock or as little product as possible. So any off cuts, we'll try and incorporate them. We'll use this later on when it comes to our double sided. So then what we can do 
is with that acetate, we cut that to four and a half by four and a half. So with this one, what we're going to do is going to cut this to four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So we can come up to this point here. So what we then need to do is, I believe, if actually, uh, hold the phone just a second. Hold that phone. Hold the phone. phone. It is your navy at this point that you need to do it four and three quarters. So we can go back in. So we are four and three quarters by four and three quarters. Then what we can do is we can bring in our gold layer. Uh, Polly just missed the measurements there on that initial uh, mirror layer that you cut. No problem. Right? So, so maybe when you've done cutting, you could just go back over that. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, the, the thing is, the, the layer I gave you a minute ago for the gold was wrong anyway. So okay. uh, it's absolutely fine. We can go over that. So what we've done is we cut the acetate to four and a half inches by four and a half inches. We then cut the navy to four and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. So that can sit over the top. Classy, isn't it? And it really is. That's why I love gold and navy. And that's why I want to do this frame. Then our gold layer, we cut to five inches by five inches. So these all mat and layer together that we'll see just in a moment or two. So what we can then do is set that one to the side as well for the time being. And then that means that we can start to then assemble that part later on. We are now at this point, we're going to start on the sentiment. So you need to bring in your chosen sentiment. I've gone for the especially for you one. You may have seen these earlier on on wake up call. So we've got this one now that we are actually ready to use. So what we can then do is we can bring in a piece of our navy cardstock again. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of this off cut that we used earlier on. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have got enough space around the edge because we're going to come along and we're actually going to be die cutting it with our nesting dies. So if I come in to here, so I'm going to cut this to, for anyone that wants to know, five by seven. So as you can see, once we foiled roughly into the middle, that gives us ample room that we can come along and do our, our matte and layer die cutting. So that means, let's set that to the side. We can bring back in our foil press. So we're bringing it into place here. And then for this one, because we are foiling onto cardstock, we, we really only need a low amount of time, and it's actually 35 seconds. Okay, doke. So we're going to come all the way up here. And this is where, with our foil press, if you find you do get under or over foiling, then you just, if you get over foiling, reduce the time a little bit more. If you have uh, under foiling, you just need to increase it that little bit more. So what we can do is if we bring in our foil and we're going to roughly cut this to the size, we want to make sure it's not overly big. But on the other hand, we don't want it to be real snug. So I'm going to pop it over the top and then I'm going to rough, roughly trim all the way around. A little bit of the excess. If you want to be neater than me, then by all means you can but we're going to get a rough cut all the way round. And I am making sure, I just want to trim away any of these jaggedy edges. Anything like that is what will also cause a little bit of overfoiling, because the jaggedy edges of your foil will nestle into your cardstock, and that's not what you want. So now that we've got these parts, so then what we'll do is we'll do this bit of foiling, Joe, and then if we come back to you, and then we can then get ready to move on to the next bit after. Sounds exciting, sounds great, Craig. Perfect. So what we can do then is we're going to bring in our sentiment here. Now I'm popping it onto my platform. I'm coming down roughly halfway. And then what we can do is press start. I always, as we said at the start, like to put my carbon plate over the top. And with this sentiment, it's a really, it's a nice one, but it's an unusual one because the bit that is actually foiling is what is usually left clear. It's usually the sentiment that foils, whereas it's done the flip reverse on these ones. And I think this is what's just incredible, but incredible about the specific foil press sentiments set. 
That's not easy to say, is it's it? It's not. It's all the S's, isn't it? Foil press sentiment set. I know. Ooh. So it beeps to say it's ready. We can pop our foil over the top. And then what we can do is pop our cardstock over the top there. We're then going to bring in our carbon plate and pop that one over the top. We're going to slide it out. And then we're going to run it through your Gemini Junior. So to answer a question that we had in Wake Up Call this morning, Joe, is you need to have your Gemini Junior or your Daddy Gemini, the original Gemini, for your foil press. It won't go through the MIDI, it won't go through the Pro, it needs to be one or the other. Awesome. So if I then take this one off, peel it off. Boom. Now, well, you're, say well, you're saying boom, we've oh. got a little bit of underfoil in did there. Did you do this on purpose, Craig? I, I would like to say I did, but no, you didn't do just, that on purpose. Let's just say it, you did. Well, we could say it, or I could just be honest with you and say it does happen to me. You know, it happens to all of us as well. So all that we're going to do then, we're going to pop it back in. Now, it'll still have enough temp or enough heat throughout the platform, so it stays on green. What we can then do is I'm going to just bump it up. I'm going to do five seconds. Add five seconds. So then that's just giving it an extra five seconds onto the platform. So then what I can do in that time, let's get some of our foil already. And this is where it's key that you have all your foiled elements ready to go. And for tight, I'm not going to be as particular with my layers, Joe. So will you just foil onto the back of that now, Craig? No, I've got another piece. Oh, okay. Yeah. I personally would never foil straight onto the back because you get a little bit of an embossed oh, okay. area. So I'll just find that you can sometimes get that embossed area coming through. So I wouldn't personally use it. What I'm doing is if I bring in my guillotine. So all that we're wanting now is if yours has underfoiled like mine, we're just going to repeat that step. So we've done that 40 seconds. So let's bring in our foil, shiny side down. Bringing in our cardstock, and then what we're doing is our carbon plate. Other foiling machines out there that doesn't have that feature of being able to up the time or lower the time, you would then have to grin and bear that. You would have to try and work it out, pad it out with different layers. You really, you've just got to grin and bear it. Whereas with ours, you can reduce the time or increase the time. So if I then pick these layers up here, and then I remove Look at that. Isn't that absolutely spectacular? And that was simply by adding five seconds. Do you know something? I even thought maybe we'd have got away with that, but maybe just three seconds or four seconds. You can try that at home. So if it worked for you first time, perfect. If not, then that's all that you need to do whenever that happens is just increase it for a few seconds. Awesome. Uh, did you want to just quickly recap the steps in that last bit, Craig? Is that all right, just for anyone that is uh, lagging behind a little bit? Uh, yeah, uh, so all that we've done is we've taken our sentiment and still using that same gold foil, the gold spangle, we put this onto our platform, low heat, everything is low, and we also done it at 40 seconds. We ran that one through with our navy cardstock and then that gives us our sentiment there. Once we come back to me after we've been to Joe, we'll then go on to die cut in the next layer. Awesome, that is brilliant. You know, I asked if Pam Craven uh, was in the comments. Pam Craven has sent me a few messages recently uh, and Pam sent me a little something at Christmas time, Craig, and we couldn't right. track it down. Uh, so the last couple of weeks, Pam, I've spoken to the County Durham uh, Constabulary. Uh, they sent out, you know, there's been a thorough investigation. Uh, we have launched a thorough internal inquiry here at Crafters Companion about the processes with our postal services. Uh, we may have spoken to private investigators and Pam, <gasps> boom, I can say that we found it. Yes, so I just want to say a big thanks to Pam. I got it. She made me these gorgeous little angels uh, to hang on my tree uh, and sent those in to me in this beautiful little light up box. Now, there is a Milky, Milky Way and a Snickers in there which I can't have. So Johnny, I'm going to just pop those to the side there uh, and I'll pass that on to uh, Johnny. Johnny says, thanks, Pam. So Pam, we found it. Thank you so much uh, for sending it in to us. Uh, I, I, I don't know where we found it. It was in a box somewhere, apparently. Um, right, whilst you are just getting uh, caught up, did you want to just have a look at these sentiment stamps? These are awesome. These are, I always think of these as like, 
not they they're like negative stamps aren't they Craig they're like the opposite to what you'd because you'd normally just get the sentiment this you get mucho foiling you do absolutely do the complete opposite good for doing all your resist resist techniques as well yeah absolutely beautiful so you've got especially for you for all you uh, Kylie fans out there and then this one happy birthday they're all really usable sentiments which I think is awesome celebrate which makes a great shape for a tag that one isn't it really lovely fussy cut around that if you want to and then you've got this one here which is thank you I love this card Craig that's been done here so fun mm, isn't it really awesome I can't see how it's been done just coloured in so but you it's, on, it's like on a glitter card on a glitter card I've not had a close-up yeah. that's Joe, you know, that is just, I can tell by the edges, that is just either uh, tri blends or I'm going to say classics with the chisel is it nib. Just onto, uh, onto glitter card. Yeah. I didn't know you put alcohol markers onto glitter card. Absolutely, cards. yep. Oh, I think that's incredible. And I love that someone's then uh, coloured in the centre point there as well. Yeah, I which know. Which is fantastic. Absolutely love that. If you want to go for those, £34. Uh, which is awesome value for money, or $40, which is fantastic. So definitely uh, grab those, uh, which is awesome. So uh, how is everyone getting on in the comments? Should we have a little check? Uh, what a perfect time to sit down and do my Easter card, says Deborah, e uh, and foil them. Great inspiration, Craig. Uh, so thank you, very, uh, thank you very much. Apparently, there's a box for you somewhere, Craig, from Pam as well. I don't know if you've got yours. We'll need to have a look as well. We'll have to hunt that. Oh, someone get the County Dunn Constabulary back on the phone. Bring the internal inquiry back in. Get on the phone to those uh, private investigators again, Johnny. We've got one more box to search. There'll be truffle pigs and sniffer dogs around here tomorrow, Pam. Honestly, at this rate. Uh, <laughs> there's chocolate in it. Johnny will find it, apparently, Pam. So don't you worry about that. Um, some, uh, lots of foil press random questions coming in as well. Generic questions, which we'll put to Craig after his craft along. I think, Craig, from what I can gather, everyone seems to be about caught up. Have you ready for the next step? I am. Yeah, let's go for it. Do you know something about I was just thinking as I was listening to you there, Joe. If, even if you're not crafting along, making what we are going to make, if you've just got your foil press out, if this craft along gives you some confidence just to be foiling anything along with me, then do you know what? even better do you know something that's probably that's probably i'm not going to say even better it's nice if you are actually crafting along with what we're making but if it is just giving you that confidence to follow me on any of the foil press stamps that you've got then it's such a good thing to hear so let us know that as well but what we can do is let's go on to a bit of die cutting first before we can start to assemble bits we are going to do the waste technique with this foil the excess foil from the peony so don't worry we are going to be using that one but what we can do is if we go in with our stitched edge oval two and what we're going to do is we're going to use die number three and four so three and then four so i'm going to set that one to the side so i'm going to use die number four so the smallest of one and that can go over the top of our sentiment and what I'm going to do is we're going to use our low tack tape and as I position that into the centre, as close as I can get, I'm going to move my fingers out of the way so I can see a bit better as well. If we then, once we get that as close as we can and we can run this one through. What I'm also going to do is if I bring in another piece of uh, that excess gold cardstock that we've had, we can pop this one through as well. I'm going to chop away that excess here, run this one through using my Gemini. So I'm going to pop a little bit here and run it through with our plates. Same plate configuration as any of your dies at home. If you are using your large Gemini with your foil press, then you will be uh, able to do both these layers at the same time. But obviously when we're using the junior we're going to do one at a time so this now gives us our die cut sentiment that we can see here so even at this point even if you wanted to stop at this point and pop this onto a card front then you absolutely can cool. it would be really nice wouldn't it joe mm. really nice just hovering that great. feature i know i say it a lot craig but also it would make a great tag with a little punch in there wouldn't it it would indeed you don't need to do much to it to create a really nice tag I would still be inclined to add a few gems on this one like we would do it towards the end. You know, even I go all out when it comes to the tags, I say. So here we are. So here is our next layer here, which can then matte and layer over the top. 
Now that we've got these ones, what we can do is let's start to assemble a few of these layers first. So I'm going to set that one to the side for now. So we've already done our base layer, so I'm going to set that out. I just like to have things in front of me, you know, like uh, uh, instruction one, two, three, etc., etc. So now that we've done the first one, the base layer, we're then going to come in with our acetate layer. And what we're going to do to start with is we're actually going to mat and layer these ones first. So we're going to take the navy, we're going to mat and layer this onto our gold. So if we pop this one in here, get that where you need it to be. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to jump over to the especially for you. We're going to mat and layer this one on. So we can mat and layer all of this into place. That can go over the top here and just hugs it nicely. Then what we can do is we're going to come into play with this. We're going to bring our foiled element into play just now. What I'm doing, Joe, is I'm only putting a tiny, tiny little bit of adhesive on the back. And there's a reason for that. If I get my acetate lined squarely in the middle, I'm going to pop my sentiment where I want it to go. And once I've got that lined up, I'm going to press just so it's uh, holding it. If I then turn it over, I now know where I can put all my adhesive and it won't be seen. Perfect. So I'm still going to use my tape runner for this. It will be ample. So we can go in all the way round. So we can then come and layer this one back into place. And also the reason that I only put a little bit of adhesive on was so that I can come back and just gently prise it off and then add all the adhesive that I want. I just find that is the easiest way to do this. So if I layer that one on, so no, it's not that one I wanted. It's my foam pads. Ah, I mean, it wouldn't be a Craig Craft along with that. Some it foam wouldn't. Pads now, would it? It wouldn't, not at all. So if you have popped your adhesive strips on already, don't worry about it. Your foam pads will cover some of them. And then what will happen anyways, because you've got the height, with the pads, any residual tape runner tape won't stick to your acetate. So now that we have got this one, what we can do is take this back and one off. So if we take all of these bits off here, and then we're going to position that into the middle, like so. So yet again, this is now another one, Joe, that could just be a card blank. You could either have the sentiment on the front of a card on its own, or you might want this full layer on the front of a card on its own. So you've got all these different options. Although that we are heading for a box frame, all these individual components can easily be popped on top of a card instead. So here we go. So then what we can do is I'm going to set all these to the side because I don't actually want to assemble them just yet. We're going to bring back in our foil press. So we'll get this one in. Then what we can do is we're going to bring in our waste of our foil. So I think if we get all these components to the side, and before I actually do this technique, do you think it's maybe worthwhile dotting back to you again, Joe? Yeah. Just to make sure, yeah, Hopefully that's a good, convenient moment to have a break with you, Craig. I think so. I think as well, because what we need to watch for as well, many of you struggle with getting backs off the foam pads if you are using it. So always conscious that sometimes some of you might just be a little bit behind because of that. So what we're going to need is we're going to need our, uh, what would have been our waste for our peonies. We're going to bring in our vellum. And the same with the acetate, what I'm going to do is I only need pretty much half of A4, not even that. So I'm going to come down to five and a quarter, as long as it's big enough to fill your foiled waste. So we need our waste, we need our vellum. What we also need is, we need a magnetic shim from your Gemini Junior. 
This is don't one. We get often get to see the magnetic shim in action, do we? No, no, but you do need one for this technique. If you can, you can tell mine's as well loved, if you can invest in a separate one just for your foil press, it's worthwhile doing it. You absolutely can mix and match, go between your junior die cutting and your foil press with this. I just like to have two separate ones and use one just for my foil press. So we've got that one, and then what we also need is another piece of our 300 GSM stamping card because we're going to cut that in half and that will become two shims. So we've got our foiled waist, we will have our vellum, we'll have our magnetic shim and we'll also have an A4 piece of white smooth stamping card or awesome. any card that's about 300 GSM. Brilliant. All right, we'll take a quick break there then, Craig. Uh, I mean, everyone seems to be keeping up as it is. It's always good to take a little bit of a break. Uh, Pamela Henderson says, got the forward press for Christmas, and this is the first time using it. Brilliant craft along, so thank you, uh, Craig. Uh, lots of, uh, um, lots of uh, generic sort of questions about the forward press. Just keep getting those into me, and I'll pop them over to Craig uh, once uh, we have done with the craft along. Right, uh, still very busy. If you want to go for the foil press machine, absolutely uh, you can. It is available to you. Uh, everything is here. So you're getting uh, the machine itself, the platform. You'll get the foil stamp and cut dies, the foil stamp dies. You're also going to get the mat, the squeezers. Uh, you're going to get the tweezers in here as well. Um, so do grab that 99.99 or 80 pounds uh, if you want to go for that, which is awesome. Right, any questions that you've got, get them into me. Uh, I think everyone's pretty much, I haven't heard, seen any comments of anyone that is uh, lagging behind, Craig, so I reckon we're good to push on if you are. It's always a, a funny sign, isn't it? And it's a good sign when it comes to a craft along, when there's not very many either comments or questions, and it goes to show that you're either following along or you're watching intently to uh, what has been done. So uh, as we, it's the one time that we actually take that as a good sign when we don't hear from you. So what we can do is I'm going to, I'm just setting my foil press out the way just for a second so that we can bring our guillotine in. What I'm going to do is, if we bring in our cardstock, now keeping in mind what we need to do is although I say we're going to do half of A4, the actual platform of your foil press is five inches in width. So I'm going to bring in my white smooth stamping card. So I'm going to do two layers and I'm trimming it down to five inches. I'm not bothered about the length, it's just as long as it's going to fit on top of our foil press. So I can then take all my bits now, so two layers, magnetic, vellum, and then also our foil. So let's go into our foil press, and we have got this on green, which lets me know we are ready to go. And what I've done is I've just popped it up to 50 seconds. Because it's vellum, and we also need a couple of extra shims just to bulk it out, I've gone up another five. So we can go shiny side down, into our mat. We can then bring in our vellum and our vellum can go into place as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our two shims. We're going to layer that one up and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our magnetic shim as well. So that was our foil, that was then our vellum, then our two layers of cardstock and then our magnetic shim. We're then going to pop our carbon, carbon plate over the top, then we're going to press start. This is the only technique where you do all of your layering up onto your base plate and then press start. Everything else you'll have seen me do, uh, everything else, the few things that we've done within this craft along and previous foil press shows, we put the foil press stamp on and then we let it run its course of the time when it comes to the heat. This is the one where we do all the layering first, Joe, then press start. Okay, Just okay. bringing them all together. So that doesn't take long to beep. Does the countdown. So if, you're, if your phone goes, if maybe there's something in the oven, the postman comes, anything like that, and you, you know, you're, ex you're waiting on your crafter's companion parcel coming, you get that excited, you forget you've already pressed start. Once it gets to the zero, it will beep to let you know it's ready. And it will also, it's round about, round about 20, 25 minutes, it will also cut itself off completely as well. Awesome. So that's a safety feature too. 
So we can then pop that one in. Now this technique, I will hold on to it just until it grabs and then let go. Because you need to remember there's all that bulk of pressure. And you might hear, oh no, we're fine. Sometimes you can hear a distinctive thud when it comes to the end. It's not damaging your, your Gemini, it's not doing any damage whatsoever to your plates. It's just from all those layers to then finishing off on the rollers. So it's absolutely fine. So we can take all these layers off. So carbon, magnetic, we're bringing in our two, our, uh, two shims. And then we're going to lift off. Straight away, it looks as though that it's done. But what I'm going to do is if I then bring in my pokey tool, and then I'm going to peel all of that off. Oh, awesome. Now look at that. I know, and it's really hard with it being the span got there. Ah, oh, look. Really, that's awesome. Cole. It's it's phenomenal, isn't it? Absolutely mm. phenomenal. And then other than tiny little bits around the edges, that's all clear, all clear that can now go in the waste. Then we can move our foil press out the way with the layers just now. So we're going to bring back in our guillotine because we want to trim this one down. Rhonda wants to know why you put the magnetic shim in there, Craig. What does that do? It's all about bulking it out. Okay. It's all about bulking out all these layers so that you can do that waste technique. Because really, the waste technique wasn't really a technique when the foil press first came out. You know, it's like, how, how can we use these layers? So it was never thought of in the process of creating the foil press. So it's only afterwards. That's why this technique as well, you won't find in like the little manual or that that you get with the foil press. You just need to obviously follow along and watch with us on Crafters TV or on YouTube. Brilliant. So now that we've got our uh, back layer here, what I need to do is I want to then cut this to the same size as our original acetate and that's four and a half inches by four and a half inches. So what I always like to do is, I know it's harder for you to see on, your, on my screen, what you'll need to do is just follow the edge of your foiled decoration. So I foiled all the way neatly along the edge and then I'm going to come in again. And if your foil press has missed bits like that, don't worry about it. It all adds to the effect. So I'm going to come down and then I'm making sure I'm at four and a half. And then I'm coming along and then with this one, it's six and a half that I need to come down to. So we've got our waste technique and we've nicely chopped off the edges to make it look that a little bit more professional. How well does that gold spangle work as well? Really lovely. So was that four by seven, did you say that piece, Craig? That was four and a half by six and a half. Four and a half by six and a half. It was, yeah. Then what we can do is we can then come back in with our original layer, so the very first layer that we've done, and you can position it wherever you want. I like to put mine at an angle for anything that's kind of like home decor. And then you will notice they'll come over the edges, but don't worry because we are going to come and snip them ones off. I'm going to do exactly what I've done before, and that is I'm going to then layer that one over the top to start with, just so I can get a bit of an idea as to where my adhesive is going to go. So I know it's within the middle. I'm not going to do that sticking down that I've done before. I'm going to do a rough guess. You can do what I've done earlier if you want. I'm going to work all my way around into just this middle compartment compartment and I'm going to come back in and go right at an angle and then I'm going to press pressing that into place then at this point if we bring in our scissors and we're going to chop away at the edges so we're just taking that excess vellum off all the way around here you could use your guillotine if you want I find just as simple to use my scissors. So that starts to give us our backdrop of our layer. Awesome. Maybe you want to keep it straight or vertical. That again is entirely up to yourself. Maybe a topper in the middle. Entirely you just however. have it as like a, a banner or a strip behind yep. if you wanted to, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So then what we can then do is we can then come in and then we can start to overlay our initial topper, sentiment topper. And because it would be going in a box frame, I'm going to pop more foam pads on the back. So we're going to layer these ones up. So if we go all the way around, 
make sure that we've got a good bit of uh, protection on the back. I'm going to come in here and when it comes to anything adhesive such as your tape runner, your foam pads, anything that's like a dry adhesive, what will happen is that will stick absolutely beautifully and perfectly to things like acetate and vellum. You'll have no issues whatsoever about it dropping off. So we can then layer that one up into the middle. So I'm going to press all of that one in here. And then that is the initial foiled home decor part that we can see here. So you'll see it just in a moment where we've got that combination. So if we were going to mount that and use that as a topper onto a card blank, Craig, what size card blank would that now go onto? So it depends. Uh, do you mean just this bit or I this? I think I mean the whole thing. The whole thing, 8x8. Eight eight. So pop that on an 8x8, eight eight, there's eight an 8x8 eight eight. card, however you want to use it. Absolutely, yep. Awesome. Absolutely. So you might not have a frame. You know, maybe, I know here our essential stores include some of these stores, like Home Bargains, The Range, uh, all the Dunnell Mill, these sorts of stores where you can get frames. If you've not, either pop it to the side or pop it onto a card blank uh, until that you find a box frame but that is the main uh, focal point the main uh, description of the box frame so I think will we let you get a bit of a catch-up before we start to do the little bits of uh, elements when it comes to the die cutting perfect um, awesome yeah we'll let everyone catch up then and then once everyone's caught up we'll expect pictures at the end don't forget as well uh loads of you still chatting away lots of questions coming in which is awesome uh but once you get caught up let me just remind you how you can watch and shop at the same time hi i'm joe from crafters tv and i'm here to show you how you can grab the best deals and shop whilst you watch during our shows so the best way to watch us is always on crafters tv head on over to our homepage and go to crafters tv you can see all of our shows, offers, and even shop while you watch. Now, if you want to get involved and comment along, head over to our Facebook page. Come say hello, ask us some questions, and lol with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay directly onto your big screen. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule, so don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. We, I was looking at that piece of video and I was thinking, just get the barbers open, Craig, that's all I could think. I haven't had my head, what's the date today? Is it the 20, 24th? It's been so January. It's been three over three months now. Twenty first of December, Craig. I mean, I've literally got a duck's tail at the back here. I'll have a ponytail by yeah. the time we get to the, bar no the barber's opening again. Uh, just a couple more weeks now. We're all very excited, aren't we? Just about, yeah. I'm. Uh, I said in the earlier show at the end of April, uh, popping home for a few days. It'll be good to see everyone. And my friend, who also was the one that cut my hair for years and years i was straight on the text message to her last week saying i'm coming home uh, you need to fit me in to get my Absolutely. hair cut so yeah can't wait to get mine done just ready uh, for just ready for summer, which is going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, well, I haven't had any messages from anyone saying that they are behind or they need anything recapping, Craig. So uh, I think we're good to uh, move on. If you are, let's go for it then. Happy enough to move on to the next part. So at this bit, this is when we're going to bring in our uh, peonies, our double-sided dies, and then we're going to start doing some die cutting. And then this is where we can start to incorporate any of these waste bits that we have got left over from the initial frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my two cutting plates for my double-sided dies, and I also need to bring in my two double-sided die plates. So what I can do is if we go straight in with our dies, we can then start to take them out. And because I've used the peony background, I just thought I would use the peony flower thought it was a bit nice as well instead of using uh, flower forming flowers or paper flowers joe i just thought it was nice just to add something a little bit different being our uh, double-sided flowers so what i'm doing is i've done my base plate and then my base double-sided plate we're going to bring in our dies here so what i'm going to do is the main backdrop of our peony i'm going to do in gold 
and the rest of the layers I'm going to do all in navy. You may choose to do them different shades of blue if you want. Again, it's up to you. And this is the great thing, and I know I keep saying it throughout craft alongs, but I keep saying it's, it's up to you or it's entirely up to you. And that's because it is. You can follow us as much as you want and you can change things about as much as you want. Then we can go into the second layer. So that's going to be navy. And then we're going to bring in our third and fourth layer, both of which are going to be navy. Let's pop them along so we can get both of them on this side here. We can also bring in another bit here. Then what we can do is if we bring in the foliage leaves, I'm going to bring, look, you can tell, I don't know, can you see the bit of navy still stuck in from when oh, I made yeah. this? There we go. So let's take that one Is that out. your one or the studio one? No, this is my one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that I was We can still it. blame Debbie Wilberton if you want, even though it's yours. I mean, we usually blame Debbie. Do you know what? Debbie or Sarah. I'm the one standing. Do you just want to blame me? No. I get to blame anything. It's not really as much fun if you're in the studio. Yeah, you get the blame a lot, Craig, when you're not here, I must say. Oh, I know I do. Uh, especially from Sarah. I mean, not that I'm one to, uh, you know, to grass her up. But and you know not. why? Because all you amazing crafters out there, you tell me on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Even a few years actually tag me in posts on really? I'm a Crafter's Companion. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what, was, oh, what was the one I read yesterday? Wanting to get the, the crafty army in to back me up. <laughs> to comment in when I get the blame for things, because you know it's not He's me. got, there's spies amongst us, Johnny. Mm -hmm. There are spies amongst us. Nope. <laughs> And, it, and it, I, I've said it a couple of times and it's true. The ironic thing is, especially on a Monday morning when I come in, it's, it's me that tidies up all the mess from the weekend and yet it's me that gets the blame. So, um, so yeah, but hey, I'm that's a guy. Just, that's life, quite. That's life. It is, I have to be used to that, don't I? So what <laughs> I've done now, we've layered them up and I'm just putting my second carbon plate and then my top plate into here. So I'm going to pop that one in, sliding that one through. I love coming here after Jan, because Jan's like me. Jan is so neat and tidy and uh, organised. It's just an absolute dream. She says, though, her craft room is an absolute mess, Craig. I could imagine, simply because, you know, a creative mind. I know what it's, I know what, yes, yeah, you're right, Johnny. I know what it's like to prep when it comes to, comes to our shows. Um, but yeah, I could imagine that being at home, Jan, Jan's craft room is, uh, can be messy. But here, that's why I love coming on on a show after she, Jan's been on. She won't send us a picture of it. And also Debbie won't show us her craft room either. They're not having it. I wouldn't look at it. Debbie Robinson's. Have oh you seen gosh. Debbie's craft room? I can imagine that's like a bomb site in there. <laughs> Hey, you know what happens if you start to blame me for things, then I'm throwing you under the bus. <laughs> Absolutely. Milk awesome. for Mr. Laird? <laughs> <laughs> not Jan, no. No, oh, oh, not Jan, but the rest of them, well. <laughs> yeah. And usually I wouldn't throw Debbie Fisher under a bus either, but I've, I've been led to believe she, she does, uh, she does tend to blame me sometimes. Have you got a notebook back there that well. you're going through? <laughs> no, it's, you guys at home, you guys at home, <laughs> tell me. So yeah, Debbie, uh, Debbie Fisher, I'm on to you. Ooh. I'm on to you now. We may not be uh, Germany travel buddies anytime soon. Well, but hopefully, one day soon, Craig. Okay? One day soon, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> but what I've done is now that I've die cut these layers here, we can pop the little bits out, taking all these ones out. And if you do happen to have these ones, and this is what you're using, maybe you have never tried our double-sided dies, just so that you know your double-sided dies, you're only ever going to find them with us at Crafter's Companion, because they are that word that I can never say. Patented? That's it. I, can, I can't... Pain... Patented... Pain... Comes out painted. Yeah, paint. I think it's because you're saying paint at the start, rather yeah. than paint. Paint. Patented. 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 Yeah. Patented. Patented. See, I, can't, I just can't do it. Pa yeah, my mum couldn't it. say millennium. It was very fun when we visited the Millennium Dome as children. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I just can't say that, that word. Can't say that word whatsoever. But yes, you will only find them at us at Crafter's Companion. 
what I've done is if I take this little one out, so some of these little bits have got tiny little areas, so just be careful. Any of these bits, just pop them out. If I still got one, so that's that one and that's that one. And then what I'm also going to do, Joe, is only with this leaf or foliage part, I'm going to cut it again. So we're going to have two lots. So I'm going to bring in another piece of our navy and another piece of our black, black, gold, using up all these little bits. So if I come in, so there is our base and our double-sided plate. We're using our gold. We're then using our die. We're putting our navy on the top. And then we're going to do our top cutting plate here. Then what we can do is we can run, run these ones through. If you wanted to, you could back these with the double-sided uh, adhesive sheets if you wanted to. They'll, they'll still cut, but we'll use the, the uh, tacky glue. So let's remove these ones. So I'm going to set them out of the way. And then we can pop these last little bits out. So if I take my pokey tool and some of these, you just need to pinch out at the end with your pokey tool because there's no release hole when your cardstock is in each side. So as soon as you've taken away one of them, you'll find the release holes underneath. So there's that one. And then these ones. These center bits, Joe, that come out. Now, for the sake of uh, the show, I am just popping them into our recycling bin here. But don't bin them. These are good for the backs of your flower forming or okay. anything along those lines. And then talking of flower forming, there may be Maybe something new coming soon, just as an FYI. Oh, yeah, we previewed it last night. Tomorrow. Oh, did Craig, you? Oh, I didn't it? see that. Ah. Yeah, tomorrow with Ben and Sarah. Brand new spring florals. Uh, yes. Flower forming. Gonna be you exciting. will. However, if you want to see them before that, oh, do tune in to Wake Up Call tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> do tune in. You can't miss it now. No, you can't. Now that we've got all of these layers done, let's bring in our tacky glue. And what we can do is if we bring layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four together, what I'm also going to do is on this layer here, Joe, because there is a bit of room in the middle, I'm going to pop this on a foam pad. Nothing's stopping you from raising these ones up. So this one, I can pop bang on over the top, like that one. And what I like to do is I pick out a specific area. So for this peony, I always have a look at this bottom part and start to line it up. So we can then bring in our next layer and then using our tacky glue, we can work our way around. Once again, what I'm doing is I'm having a look. Now this part will be difficult because it's navy on navy, but I am just matching up this point with the base point and I'm going to layer it on top. So don't always think as though you can't layer colour on top of colour because it can actually give you a very elegant look and you'll see that once we've finished with the navy on navy. We've got that bit of gold in the backdrop and then the navy just finishes it off. So we can press that one in. We're going to take this real skeleton layer. We're going to run all our little bits of our applicator here and then same bit I know because I've done this one so many times this bit where my fingernail is is also this bit here so I'm going to layer that on top and I'm letting it fall down naturally and I'm just letting it follow around all these small apertures and I'm going to press gently just make sure it all adheres so you'll be able to see so if I keep tilting that You'll oh, nice. Love see that what point. I mean by uh, the navy? Although it's three layers of navy, it does make it stand out by having that luxurious gold on the back. Then what we can do is we're going to do the same with our leaves. So we're going to go around all of these bits with our tacky glue. So if we pop this one in. And then once I've done this next layer, Joe, it's simply the case of assembling it. So do you think it's worthwhile coming back to you once I've done this next leave and then we'll assemble it afterwards? 
Uh, absolutely, that's a, uh, a brilliant idea, Craig. Fab. Uh, we'll so give here everyone we'll go. a catch up in a moment to get finished. We will just pop that bit on. We can layer that over the top. I'm going to press, and then that'll be our three layers that we've got ready to finish and assemble onto our card or our box. Uh, yes, absolutely. Brilliant then. So let's give everyone that chance to get themselves uh, caught up. Which flowers are these, are Susie Craig? Peony. The peonies. Peony double-sided. Double-sided yep. peony is what you're working with there. Any of your flower dyes, though, Craig, would they work? Any of your double, other double-sided flowers? Can. You can be using whichever ones that you want. It's just if you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. But if you want to use any that you've got, do you know what? It doesn't even have to be ours. If you've got someone else's brand and you want to use them, go for it. Brilliant. Right. Well, whilst you catch up, let's share with you this week's Get It, Got It, Good. Oh, it's a good one this week. Yes, the Get It, Got It, Good is the twirling characters craft box. In here, you are going to get metal dies, card blanks, envelopes, acrylic stamps, coloured cards, printed papers, dew drops, and twine. You're going to make at least 24 cards. And you're going to have so many things in there that you're going to be able to continue to use. Make sure you go and get all the inspirations. CraftersCompanionBox.com is where you'll have all of the how-to videos as well that you need to make something awesome. So don't miss out on this week's Get It, Got It, Good deal. Uh, so it's always a fabulous deal. Remember, a new one launches every single Monday, which is awesome. Right, I want to take you through the foil stamp and cut dies that we've got on the show. You know what I say, Craig? If it ain't Baroque, don't fix it. Uh, it's been a while since we wore that one out, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. This is the Baroque frame that you've got uh, just here. And these are foil stamp and cut dies. So that means they're going to stamp your uh, beautiful foiling, but they're also then going to cut out as well. So these ones are cutting a frame for you, which I think is absolutely awesome. You've got that one, but then you've also got this one just here, which is the butterflies and blooms. Schmettling and Blumen, uh, which is that one. And that is going to cut all of that awesome detail in there for you. I love our foiling system because it still continues to be ultra shiny, like for years after things have been foiled. There's a lot of other systems out there, and I've certainly had stuff in the past that's been foiled using different systems. Uh, something like a diary that I had foiled for me, and after a few months, the foiling had completely lost its shine. So this is great, because that's not gonna happen. You've also got this gorgeous Art Deco one in here included, which is brilliant. And you're also going to get in there the Art Nouveau, which is that one. Just there. how glorious is that? That is the uh, element that's going to be stamped, uh, foil stamped, and then cut out as well. They're really good size as well. They're all uh, four by two of them, are four by six, and two of them are five by five. So brilliant sizes. Uh, a wonderful creator card collection. Uh, don't forget, you can use your club inspired discount on that as well, uh, which will give you a great discount. Now, uh, forty-seven twenty in the UK for that, or fifty-six dollars eighty, which is fantastic. Now we've got that stag collection in here. You are going to get like does what it says on the tin you are going to get the stag included uh, the stag was such a popular diet when we launched it and continues to be now kind of trendy aren't they stags i think that's maybe what it is we see lots of these in uh, our home decor pieces and uh, i see lots of bed linen at the moment with uh, stags on seems to be uh, the go-to thing so you're going to get that stag in there which is absolutely awesome you're also then getting as well the cardstock so it's the 36 sheet 230 gsm double-sided and it's textured and the neutrals are brilliant. They're a real um, a must have because they are so, so practical, those neutrals. So you're going to get all of that in there, which is brilliant. And then you're going to get that Skull Spangle Foil. Now this is the one that Craig's been using in this show. It's not, that, not been uh, available all that long in the UK. I know you guys in the US had it a while. It is now available in the UK. And uh, you have also got a tape runner in there as well, which is absolutely fantastic. £24 as a platinum member in the UK, $32. Uh, platinum members in the US save almost $18 there compared to uh, buying the individuals. April is loving all of the samples in the show today. It says the design team have done an absolutely amazing job. They really have. They do with so many things, but it seems like they especially love the foiling, doesn't it, April? Any questions you've got, keep getting them in and I'll pop them over to Craig. Uh, I think, Craig, everyone is pretty much ready if you are. I am indeed, yeah. Let's go for it. So what I'm going to do first is before we pop our peony and that on, I want to make sure that it's going to fit my box frame. Now, if, if I've measured this correctly, it will be 
maybe a couple of millimetres too big, and that being the cardstock, this will probably be a couple of millimetres too big, which is what I want because I want to be able to trim it down. Nothing worse than it being too small, and you have to then, you know, just try and do a patchwork. So what I'm going to do with my one that I've got here, let's pop our layers back into place. I'll make sure I've got my glass layer in. Let's pop these ones in. So let's see. So this one was to go there, there, and there. So if I then go to turn this one, so let's do it upwards so you can see just now. Ah, look at that. So in a strange way, that's perfect. It's literally maybe about a couple of millimetres too big. So what we can then do is if we come back with our guillotine, and this is where we're going to do little bits of trimming. So I'm going to trim a, a slither, basically, off at each side or to be more technical, roughly about a millimetre off each side. A fly's eyelash? Yes. A warthog's nostril? Or, or that one, one that I've never heard before. Never heard that one before. And the reason I'm doing a little bit on all four corners is so that it's going to be even all the way round. So let's take this one off. Can't think of any others, Craig. No, I can only think of fly's eyelash. So if we then, so if we get that little hooky bit into the side, so we can see, so it does fit, obviously, yes, it is back to front, but I'm doing it this way so that you can see. If you feel it's maybe ever so slightly snug, what we can then do is we can go back in, and I'm only going to do this on one of the sides, so slither. So if I do the top and I do the bottom, and then that should be enough for us to pop in. And you'll be able, you'll see there, it is literally tiny, tiny little slithers that I've been doing. So if we come back in, if we go to set that one in, there we go, fits perfectly. It will, of course, be going that way, but we need to pop our embellishments on. So now that we've done that, what actually, what I'll show you as well, this could be an 8 by 8 card blank. So even if you just pop that on, Joe. Oh, nice. Maybe another layer over the top if you yeah. want. You've got that option if you want, so you don't have to do it as a box frame. You like a large card, don't you, Craig? I, yeah. Eight, eight by eight and seven by sevens are my card. I love doing doing the big cards. But then that comes from foil press, big cards. That's coming from big backgrounds that I love, big cards. Hunky Dory Crafts, big cards. You know, I really do like the big cards. So what we can then do now is we can then come in with our embellishments here. So let's bring all these ones in and I am, I'm going to be using my foam pads for this only because I'm going to be ending up lifting it up on the screen to show you. If I was to use my glue gel, which I would usually do, what will happen is um, the, the layers will start to fall down when I set it up for you to see at home. So I'm going to use my foam pads. So let's bring it in. If you're wondering what that noise was, it, what, was, what, the, yeah. it was a, it was a, of my cup, sorry about that. Ah. Gosh, I'm so noisy today, aren't I? You can tell that it's Friday for you. Because I've obviously not grown up enough to have a mug, I have to have a sippy cup, Craig. You have to have a sippy cup, what yeah. I have to have in the studio, I can't be trusted. No, you can't. It's, you know, it's not, it's not as if we're trying to do a craft class cla craft along, is it? No, no, no absolutely. Don't mind me, Craig. Noisy, sorry. noisy boy. Noisy boy. I was always quite disruptive at school, believe it or that, not. I'm not surprised at that. Mm. I'm not surprised at that. I'll pipe What's down now. I'll pipe down. That's enough for me. No, no, because then that's not you, and we want you to be you. Most of the time. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is we're going to add these ones into place here. And exactly the same reason as before. I'm going to use just a couple of small foam pads so that it's going to be an instant attach so I'm going to do little square ones here and then I can even then pop in use your pokey tool if I then slot that one in here move it where I need to move it to let's bring in this one also do the same here and we're going to tuck this one in here we have then got two last steps to do 
Let's bring in our gold gems, or whatever colour you want to use. These ones uh, being the diamond sparkles from Hunky Dory. You might want to use other things. And then what I'm doing is I'm bringing in my Colal Tacky Glue. And it's something that I say all the time. I say this all the time. And if you've heard it many, many times, I apologise. But your gems or adhesives, they can be the best branded gems and adhesives in the world. And over time, the adhesive will start to come away. So I'll always pop some of our tacky glue underneath to make sure it's held in place. So I'm going for the medium ones. And I'm going to go four in each corner. And the adhesive on the back of the gems will make them stay in place to start with. And then the glue will dry and make it extra secure. So that's four corners. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into a few of these little ones. So I'm going to then do, so what have I got? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I've got six little ones. So what I'm going to do is go into the corners here and do one, two, three. One, two, three. We can come in, pick up our gems. And it our looks very regal, this creation. Regal. Quite, doesn't it? I'm, I'm looks happy like it could have that. a little feather in it and it could be like a medallion yeah, as, on a king's yeah. chest from like, I don't know, some period in the past. I'm not very good with historical periods. I don't no, know if you I'm work not. that out. I enjoyed history, I know when the Tudors were, but apart from that, I mean, I'm not, not, I'm not really worth asking other than that. No, you can tell us the history of your revision, but that's about it. Absolutely. And I don't know why. I know a lot of random facts, but just not very good with my historical periods. No, I, I loved history, but uh, years of practice, Johnny, years of practice. Johnny's just complimenting me on my steady hand with the gems. And I'm saying that is, uh, actually, have you noticed as well? So gems, steady hand, pokey tool, a uh, double-sided tape, use it with a pokey tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, you could use the pokey tool to take the backs off your foam pads, but all about the pokey tool. So what we can do now, is now that we've got these gems into place, what I've already done is I've already tied the small navy ribbon, and I've purposely not tied this one because I get asked this time and time again. Well, I mean, slanderously, I do people claim that you buy the. I, you know, yeah, people I, have said that you buy them, Craig. Don't I know they? people say that I, I buy them. I definitely didn't see you take them out of the Amazon box outside. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Say all you want. I'm a way to prove that no. I do do my he own. He does, but you do make them. I do You're them very on Facebook talented, Live. Craig. I've done a video as well. Now you've maybe not heard this technique. Some of you may laugh, although it's quite good coming up to Easter. So what we're going to do is we've got a ribbon and we're going to go bunny ears. So we're going to use our finger at the top. So we're going to loop them over. So we can see here, then we're going to cross them over and I'm using my fingers just to grab them so that we've got them crossed over. And then we're going to this one here, we're going to turn it under and it's actually going to come through the little loop. So we're going to pull and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the center and I'm going to pull the tails as well as the loops to get them where I want them to be. Keep pulling keep pulling, get them the length, get them nice and taut, and then once you're happy with them, you can then take your scissors. I don't do Vs, I like to do mine at an angle. So we're going to do that, and then that. Let's trim that a little bit more. Gorgeous. And then there we go. There is my bow. So now you know that I do do them. Well, everyone no, at home Nikki, knows no, that no. I do them. <laughs> You've done that, not me. Yeah, I wasn't oh, no. <laughs> So then what we can do to attach this one, did I have any, I thought I had glue dots, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is we will, for the sake of the show, let's use a foam pad. I'll come back later on and add glue gel later once I don't need to keep lifting, lifting it up. So we're going to pop that one into the bottom right hand corner. And for this one, I am going to use our tacky glue because this should hold long enough. Pop that one on into place here. And then what you could do is add a gem in the middle if you want to finish off. I don't have any tiny ones left, so I'm not going to. But that is then 
the main focal point of your box. But if we bring it in, so let's bring in our box frame, we're going to turn it over, fit it in. I'm going to make sure it's the right way. If I pop them into place here, and then there we go. There is our How box awesome. frame. We've got our little box frame. So we can see how we've got all these different layers. You could, if you wanted to, you could have used an 8x8 card blank instead. That would be a really nice card. Maybe make a little box if you want to, to pop it in. And I mean like a physical paper box that you make with a scoreboard. Or, as I say, pop it into this. Now, I, I can't remember. This, this was for oh, $3.99, maybe $4.99 for this box frame. Really inexpensive. Nice grey tone that ties in well with the gold and the navy. And then there we go. That's your foil press uh, craft along box. Awesome. Well, if you have been crafting along uh, with Craig, we would love to see your pictures. You can send them to us, studio at craftscompanion.co.uk. Uh, get them in uh, and we'll share them uh, with everyone that's been crafting along. I can't wait to see how you've gotten on with that. Uh, now, if you are still sat on the fence about a foil press, well, let me just uh, share with you all the details of the fantastic foil press. Gemini Foil Press has arrived. Professional and luxurious hot foil letterpress can now be achieved in your own home with our innovative foil press system. This clever machine has been designed with so many fabulous and unique features and it really does take paper and mixed media crafting to an exciting new level. Delivering professional looking foiling results using a hot press technique that ensures crisp, clean images. Perfect for stationery, invitations, party decorations, home decor, and so much more. The foil press is the only hot foiling system that uses a silicon plate, and we've created a plate that has edge-to-edge -edge heat. So no matter where you place the dies, the heat will be the same. There are no cold spots or hot spots, just one consistent temperature, which again ensures perfectly foiled results every time you use it. Fast heat up reduces wait time, making projects faster to complete. The innovative foil stamp and cut dies allows you to do exactly that, creating professional quality hot stamping, and they work on everything from paper, fabric, cardstock, to leather, vinyl, balsa wood, and more. Don't waste any of your foil, as you can use the negative foil left over to create another project. With any machine that involves the use of heat, safety features are an absolute priority. The foil press has been fitted with a built-in cool-down feature that kicks in when the machine has been in use for a lengthy amount of time. There is also an automatic shut-off feature that will turn the machine off if the heated platform has been engaged for 25 minutes and not used. Everything needed comes in the box, including a handy manual which gives you all the time and temperature settings for the dies, so you can start foiling straight away. The Gemini Foil Press. Made by crafters. For crafters. All the details there of the incredible foil press, which is awesome. Right, we're going to go through some of the foil press items. Uh, if you want to go for that foil press machine, though, remember, of course, you can. Uh, you get 100 bonus points today, £80 as a platinum member, everything in there that you need. Foil stamp and cut dies, your foil stamp dies, uh, the machine, the platform, uh, the mat itself, the tweezers, all of that is in there for you, which is absolutely fantastic. But what we're also going to do is now go back through some of the other elements uh, that we have included. So uh, we're going to start off with the um, foil stamp and cut dies. This one's awesome. This is your Baroque frame that you've got just here. It's going to foil for you, but it's also going to cut this gorgeous frame too. You've got that. You've got this one here, which is your butterflies and blooms, which again gives you a really awesome amount of detail in the die cutting as well as the foiling there. This one here is your Art Deco. I mean, that just screams Roaring Twenties, doesn't it? And you're also going to receive in there the Art Nouveau too. £59 or $71 uh, if you want to get your hands on them. $47.20 or $56.80 as a Platinum member. Don't miss out on those. Right. Myself and Craig did the uh, launch of these, uh, or one of the launches of these, I remember, uh, and they were so incredibly busy. Let me take you through what you're getting. You're getting four of them, but they are awesome. They are so versatile. So that one there is your Celebrate. 
You're also going to get in here the happy birthday, which is that one there, which gives you that. Now, I love this foil on foil technique. Isn't that just really super striking? You've got, especially for you, which is the one that Craig has used there in the craft along, which gives you that technique, as you can see. Oh, isn't it just gorgeous? And you're then getting thank you in here as well, uh, which is going to give you this kind of finish. Amazing. To get those for £34 or $40 is really, really awesome uh, value for money. Platinum members, you're looking at £24 or $32, which is really awesome. Right, next up, we've got some monograms for you. Now, I'm going to take you through these. Let me show you the idea of the kind of thing that you can create with these. Uh, they are incredible. Uh, you will need uh, the numbers or the alphabets if you want to, uh, of course, add uh, the monogramming onto there. But you can see, I know lots of you already got numbers and alphabets in your ranges. So if you are doing things like stationery, how classy does this look? I mean, that is absolutely awesome, isn't it? That is a, a invitation there, as you can see. Look, open it up. where is the wedding? Should we go? When is it? Should, can I just have a look when it is? Uh, request the pleasure of Sarah and Simon, uh, 25th of July, 2019. Uh, no, it probably got, uh, yeah, we missed it, I'm afraid. It looks like it'll have a great buffet, doesn't it? If that was the uh, invitation you get. Uh, oh, Johnny, don't say that. Johnny says maybe buffets will be a thing of the past. Now, I, no, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't, no, I just can't even, sorry? <laughs> yes, uh, so <laughs> these are the mon <laughs> monograms, you've got the hex frame in here, which is awesome. Uh, and then when you're going to receive in here the, <laughs> the geometric frames, you've then got also the uh, classic plaque. And you've got the uh, confetti explosion, as well as the uh, grande uh, and uh, the laurel reef. And you'll also receive in there too the elegance, uh, which is awesome. You get all of those, £36 or $60, which is fantastic. So do grab those. Right, expressions next for you. Item, I don't want to tell you the item number. You don't need to know the item number, do you? Uh, it's, it's an eight piece collection, uh, this one. Let me take you through uh, to some of the things that you're gonna be able to do with them. So you can RSVP to the Finger Buffet. Uh, you've got the uh, wedding invitation here. Uh, you've also got happy birthday, a uh, special friend, and you've also got then uh, congratulations in there too. Was that eight or have I missed one too? Four, that's five, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to have to go through them, aren't I? So you are going to get, <laughs> sorry, you're going to get save the date, which is awesome. Are uh, you going to get wedding, congratulations, RSVP, happy birthday, invitation, special friend, and party. Uh, Thirty-five pounds or sixty-two dollars uh, to get all of those, which is awesome. Right, uh, we're going to do the. Oh, we're going to we. Oh, Try that again. Keep getting your questions into me because we're going to put them over to Craig soon. I know Craig's got loads that he wants to share with us. I know that there's lots of pictures coming in that we're going to share as well. Uh, don't forget to check out your baskets. Remember, you can get Club Inspire points on everything you buy with us here at Crafters TV. If you're new to us and you're not familiar with Club Inspire, here's all the details. Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. 
when you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. Become a member of our club today. Uh, all the details there, of course, of Club Inspire, which is amazing. Uh, lots of love for the craft along Craig. Uh, Aisha uh, loved it. She also loves that wedding invite. Uh, La Quieta saying how awesome your craft along uh, was too. Uh, June has crafted along. Uh, she will make a few cards and post them later. Oh, absolutely. Don't forget to send us pictures. If you want to send some pictures in, please keep doing so as you finish them. Also, what I would say is if you're running a little later behind or you're going to try the craft along between shows, then it'd be lovely if you could send us your pictures in our later Creative Craving show. So I'd love to see them then as well. And I'll remind you of that in the later Creative Craving show. We'll give everyone uh, a little bit longer. Just keep those pictures coming in, Craig. So what did you fancy sharing with us uh, for the rest of the show? Right, Theo. So there's a couple of things that we're going to do. First of all, let's show you how you can use your normal dies to foil and also your die cuts to foil. So using your die cuts is very similar to the waste technique we used earlier on. So what I thought we'd do is if you've seen uh, Craft Vault this morning, you'll have seen these arched window dies. And I said what we would do in this show is we'd use them to foil. So we're going to use this detail within this die to foil in a moment or two. What we're going to do to start with is we're taking this die cut. So I've cut this into a white smooth stamping card. So what we can do is we can bring in any of our coloured foils that we have or you have at home. What I'll also need is my magnetic shim from my junior. We will need two shims of cardstock, 300 GSM, and then we'll also need our top carbon plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way up here to 50 seconds. So we're going to go all the way up. So we are then going to do, now that we're also on green to say we're good to go, foil, paper craft foil, shiny side down. Then the side that you want to foil is also going to go face down. We're then going to bring in our two shims of cardstock. Now these help to bulk out the layers, but what it also does is it catches any of that residual foil on uh, the waste or onto your cardstock. We're then going to bring in our magnetic shim and then also our top carbon plate. We're going to press start. Does the countdown. So between all that heat building up between all the layers and then the pressure of the Gemini in a moment, what that will do is that will then push all of that heat activated um, foil, because that's what it is, it's heat activated foil, into all of those die cut parts. So this could be die cut sentiments, it could be die cut characters, anything that you've got at home that you want to die cut and maybe you think, oh I want it in a rose gold, but you don't have rose gold cardstock, but you've got rose gold foil. Or maybe what you can do instead of putting that full sheet of rose gold foil, maybe do any excess strips that you've got left over. So it could be a strip of red, a strip of gold, a strip of turquoise, anything like that and make all your own multicoloured layers. But this then lets us know that it's uh, a way to be ready by beeping. So we're sliding it out now. And then what we can do is we can then run that one through. Because there's a multitude of layers, I'm just holding on until it starts to feed itself through. And then once it does, I'm just going to cradle it as it comes out the end. So if we remove the layers, we're going to take each of these layers away. So if I then carefully peel all that excess off. And if I need to use my pokey tool to take the corner, I will. So peeling that off, so there is what is left of our waste, nothing on it. If I peel this one off, now look at that. We've now transformed what was a white die cut piece into now rose gold die cut piece. And of course that could be any color of foil that you've got at home. 
But then look at that. That is the waist, the oh, negative. Oh, I love that, Craig. Isn't that really good to use as well? It's cute, so isn't it? This has been the shim that's helped bulk it out, but what it's done is it's caught all of these pieces when it comes to the shimmed cardstock. So you could be using that if you want to trim that out of the way. But the other way that you could use the dies, Joe, is if we bring this one back in, I'm then going to set that to the side for a second. I'm then going to bring in, let's bring in a piece of navy, because this will really show off the layers. And exactly the same as to when you would do your foiling with your foil press stamps. I'm going to get my foil. So let's get this to size. So I'm going to set that out of the way. And we're then going to pop this one on. So you, all that you need to really do is think of it as a normal foil press stamp. You're not really going to be doing anything different to it. Let's just take a little bit more off. So we can then trim all this down. And then to determine how long you want to pop it on for, just class it as the size as you would with your foil press stamp. So for instance, if I bring in my matrix guide, so it tells me here 300 GSM cardstock for a medium stamp, it's saying 15 seconds. Now, I would class that as medium and it's still going to be 15 seconds. So let's come all the way down. So we'll bring it all the way down to 15. If you're unsure, there's nothing stopping you from maybe adding a couple of extra seconds just in case. We are then going to pop it onto our carbon plate or our base plate, apologies, and then we're going to do our carbon plate and press start. So nothing different than what we do with the foil press stamp, it's just a normal die. So this could be ours, Tonic, Spellbinders, Hunky Dory, uh, any of these brands. The only ones that you can't do is the real thick dies or the multimedia dies, but any of your thin wafer dies you can do. That beeps. So then what we're going to do is our foil, shiny side down, we're then going to do our cardstock over the top. Also, our carbon plate once again, sliding it out. And then we're going to run this one through. And even then, you might think, well, 15, 18 seconds, it's not a lot. When you're looking at these dies, it's only that top part, the part that would die cut. That's the only bit that needs to be uh, have all that heat at the top. So that's going to transfer the foil onto your card. So if I lift this one up, now, before I even remove it, you'll be able to see that impression. Come and look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous, Craig. So you can see that coming through. But if I then remove that, look at awesome. that, Joe. Look at that. Isn't that just spectacular? And with this specific die, because you also get the outside edge die, you could then come along and you could die cut that one out. So you've now got your window die. Not only can you die cut it, but you can now foil with it as well. So that's how you would use your normal dies to foil with and also foil your die cut pieces too. Fantastic. It looks awesome, Craig. What a really, really effective uh, way of using your dies and also then giving your dies you already have a complete new lease of life, which is fantastic. So, uh, you know, stuff that maybe you haven't used for a while, that's maybe in the bottom of the drawer, definitely get it out. <laughs> and rediscover it. Uh, don't forget the foil press is available to you if you are in the UK. Uh, it is on with 100 bonus points, which is awesome. And if you're a Club Inspire member, uh, you can also get it as well with uh, for £80 pounds as platinum. And now you're gonna get everything included that you need in here. So you're gonna get the foil stamp and cut dies, your foil stamp dies, the machine itself. Uh, you're going to get the platform uh, and then all of the accessories that you need to. It comes with that full manual, which has the uh, whole matrix in there for all of the uh, different surfaces that you are going to need to foil onto. Uh, right, the uh, I need to go back to the frames. You guys are loving these, very, very busy on them. Remember what you're getting in here, you're gonna get the Baroque frame. Now what it does is it adds that foiling as you can see, but then it also cuts out the centre part there. We've just popped a floral die in there just to frame that. You are then also getting in here the, this is your um, bloom, this is the butterflies in bloom. There we go, got them in the end, uh, which is brilliant. You're going to get the Art Deco in here. 
which cuts and foils all of that awesome detail. And you're getting the Art Nouveau in there as well. £59 or $71 if you want to get your hands on those. $47.20, $56.80 as a Club Inspire Platinum member. Now, uh, I want to go back through the expressions again for you. I'll show you a couple of these just to give you an idea of the sort of um, finish that you get with them, which is fantastic. I don't think some of these are these ones. Sorry, do excuse me. Just chatting, just chatting amongst myself here, aren't I? Uh, I just had a lovely time. Uh, what you've got here, these are the kind of things that these are going to do for you. So they're going to put these kind of expression sentiments into your project. So here we have got uh, Congratulations, I've also got RSVP in there as well. I'm gonna run you through the different sentiments that you are getting. So you've got eight of them in here. You are going to get save the date. You've also got wedding, congratulations, RSVP, happy birthday, special friend, party, and you're gonna get invitation in there as well. You get all of those for that great price. 35 pounds or $62 uh, is your price on them, uh, which is awesome, awesome value for money. Uh, platinum members there, 28 pounds, which is fantastic. Or 49.60, do grab those, they're awesome. Are you ready to see some pictures of people's craft alongs, Craig? Yeah. Let's have a look then. Val sent us this in. Oh, I love this, Craig. She just used a, a different uh, floral element than you did. Absolutely, yeah. That I want to say is from Hunky Dory's uh, Peony Promise it collection. Is, yeah. It is. Love that. Uh, Janet has sent wow. us in. This, no, is this Jan in Ravello? I'm not sure. Uh, Absolutely. Is it Jan Robbins? I think it is Jan in Ravello, isn't it? Spectacular. Uh, beautiful, isn't it? And she nailed that, Craig. Absolutely. And then look at the difference that it, it shows just by using some of your blue mirror card or mirror card on that back there. Isn't that so well? Oh. And I love those swirls that she's used too. I hope it's warming up, Jan in Ravello. You have got a glass of Prosecco on the go. Uh, Lynn has sent this one into us as well. This is awesome, Craig, isn't it? Love that as well. I just love how you've taken the initial idea and the initial uh, plan of the frame and then you've gone and uh, created your own using the double die cuts and that love them just love it brilliant keep getting them into us any pictures uh, that you have got whatsoever i will absolutely love to see them about 20 minutes left on the show craig i mean we're not going to vote for a demo of the show are we i mean it's a foregone conclusion i mean i feel like we may as well just vote on the demo of the week now that we've got sarah's happy birthday and craig's box frame uh, so call whoever's in over the weekend tell them not to bother johnny it's over it's game over for them because I think the winner is definitely going to be one of those two. Uh, what would you like to share us next, Craig? Well, it won't be me in this weekend, that's for sure. Not this weekend. So what we're going to do is let's have a look at the Baroque that you were just showing, Joe. And the reason being is this is one of our foil and cut dies. So what this does is exactly as I've just said, it foils, but it also cuts as well. So you need a different plate configuration for this one. Now with this one, what you will see is it is a deep grey colour. So this straight away lets you know that it is going to cut as well. Now what we need for this one is you need your metal shim that comes with the foil press. So this is different to the one that comes with your Gemini, but it does come with your foil press. So you need this one. Obviously you need your foil press stamp and cut. You will also need your Gemini metal shim. So whether you're using the Junior or the Large Gemini, you need your metal shim as well. And then what I've done is I've brought in the Fuchsia Centura Pearl. And because we've got it in that little bundle, let's go and add some more of the Gold Spangle. So what I can do for this one, following the, the guides that you see within the matrix. So this top bit is all about your normal foiling stamps. This bit here is all about your foiling and cutting stamps. This bit here is just a little bit about your multi-surface foils. Quickly to pick up on that, your multi-surface foils is really only for things like your real leather. Everything else, so whether it's cardstock, whether it's vellum, acetate, any of your different materials, still use paper craft foil. So I've gone to 50 seconds here. So I'm going to pop my foil and cut stamp on here and I'm going to press start. 
and as I always do, still pop in my carbon plate over the top here. And then you're thinking now, if you go for this specific one in, because you've got that nice aperture frame, imagine just popping a little photo back. Imagine you've got your 8-inch or your 10-inch memory books, and then you can start to position them into the middle, and you've created a little frame. It could be a little pocket. Joe's favourite could be a shaker. Or you can take that centre component that comes out, use that as a tag instead. Lots of different ways that you can use this one foil press stamp and die. It's just, it's just mind boggles the things that you can do, Joe, with them. Yes, absolutely. They are so versatile, Craig, aren't they? And I think the amount of things they go on to is really, really awesome. It is. I think a lot of people don't buy a foil press, Craig. Want one, don't buy one. Maybe put it off. Maybe think they don't have the technical know how to do it. But everyone you speak to that buys one says they just wish they'd have bought one, you know, months or even years before. I yeah. think it's inevitable you're gonna get it at some point. Definitely grab it whilst you've got the extra points would be my suggestion. Absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right. I would do that too. What I'm actually waiting to do, I'm waiting to do the countdown again, simply because I popped my foil press stamp on straight onto my mat. I need to pop it onto my metal shim from my foil press because we need that heat to be conducted all the way through. So what I'm going to do once again is let's go up to 50 seconds. So we're going all the way up here, right up to 50, do the countdown again. Press start. It's, you're right what you were saying a minute ago with all the different materials and that that you're able to foil onto. Maybe you're a sewist or maybe you're into your soft crafts, then you can start to foil onto your different bits of fabrics or materials or leathers, satin and organza ribbons. That looks absolutely spectacular when you foil onto your ribbons as well. If you've got alphabets, if you manage to get the Eclipse alphabet dies, Instead of using them as actual eclipse, why not use them? The same technique that I showed you with the windmill, and you can then start to foil them. Foil any of your alphabets that you've got now instead. Even your big alphabets, you know the ones with the butterflies in them? Oh, yeah. You know how you've got the outside die? Why not foil the inner part of the die, of the alphabet, and then you can die cut all the way around with the outside die. Lots of different ways that you can be using your dies at home, not just your foil press dies. So what we're then going to do is we're then going to put our foil shiny side down. So we're going to pop that one on. We're going to bring in our Centura Pearl upside, well, upside down, it's double-sided, but you would pop it face down the way you want it to be. And then our metal shim from our junior. And we're also going to put in our carbon plate, sliding it out, and then we're going to run it through here. That's then going to go through. Just to say as well, going back on foiling with your normal dies, a question that I get asked quite a lot, and it's imperative you don't do what I'm about to say. And that's many you'll say, when you're foiling your normal dies, do you have the die facing up or facing down? Make sure your die's facing up. It does tell you on the platform, if you have your die facing down, you're going to cut into your foil press platform, which you don't want to do. So always make sure your foil, uh, your die is facing upwards. That will stop any of that happening. So now that we've got these layers, we can see our outside has die cut. Our inner part has die cut as well. You can even take this bit off and then there's a nice decorative part that you've got here. But if we then come along and take this bit off, what we're going to do is if I peel, look at that jaw. Awesome. How phenomenal is that? So that's Centura Pearl, 310 GSM. It's a foil and cut stamp. So it's done all the gold foiling with the gold spangle all the way around. It's cut the aperture, it's cut the outside as well. So you can then maybe pop a sentiment, a shaker, a topper, anything along those lines within the middle there that you're now able to frame with these ones. So cool, Emma, I love them. Yeah, they are brilliant. Some questions then for you, Craig, that we've got coming earlier. I think you may have just covered it then, but I think it's a slightly different question. Maureen says, if you use ordinary dies, does it cut through the card where the normal cutting lines are as you only want it to foil and not to cut. Why don't, why don't they cut basically and why do they foil, I guess, Craig? Uh, it's all to do with the pressure. So as long as you follow the plate combination that I showed you, then what will happen is there's going to be enough pressure for your cardstock to lightly foil across the top. There's not going to be over excess pressure where it's going to push into your card and therefore die cut. So as long as you do that plate configuration I showed you, it's just going to foil, it's not going to die cut. 
brilliant, thanks for that, Craig. Susie T says, I have a foil question. I have some foil. I got to cold foil or put the foil onto the adhesive uh, for, and I have foil for my foil press. There are, they are different foils, aren't they? How can I tell them apart? Uh, absolutely, they are different. So our ones, when it comes to our foil press, are uh, heat activated foils. Now, I can't tell you how you tell the difference apart without seeing the are cold foil and foils that you've got. Though what I can do is I can let you know the difference between our paper craft foil and our multimedia foil. So if I show you this one here on the inside, if we go up there, we'll go if we go up above. Can you see the inside tube is white? So that is our paper craft foil. Right. Our mix our um, mixed media foil is a craft card colour in the awesome. middle. That's the difference between them two, but as far as going back to your question, obviously our foil is, but the paper craft is going to have that white cylinder, not knowing what your cold foiling foil is, I'm not able to uh, answer that one. But we're always on social media, We've, or there's 10 minutes, even if you heat, pop a, a picture in so that we can kind of see, but uh, ours is white in the middle. Do let us know. Uh, I don't fully understand this question, Craig, so I'm hoping you do. Queen Jitter says, can you use the dies for foiling like the older press plates without the foil and then use waxes? Yes. Yeah. So what Ten. does that mean then, Craig? Right, you Let's go. So let's take, what we're going to do is let's take the Baroque that we've just done a moment ago. Let's bring in a piece of black card because this shows it off nicely. So what we can then do is if we bring in our base cutting plate from our Gemini, we can then also bring in, if we can find it, if we can find our, let's see, here it is here. We need a rubber embossing mat. So we need our embossing mat here. Base plate embossing mat, cardstock. Then if we do our foil press stamp face down, we can then bring in our plastic oh, shim. Do it for us, yep. Craig. Oh, fantastic! And then our top plate. We're then going to run that one through. So once again, it's all about the pressure. But with no heat and no foil, what that'll then do is all that detail within the foil press. Uh, either the one that cuts or even the one that doesn't cut, you can still do this. That I'm away to show you now. So are you essentially then using it like an embossing folder, Craig? Exactly. Okay. Absolutely spot on. So if I reach over and I'm hoping it's we in the have, craft oh no I know where our gilded wax is, it's right underneath. So if we then bring in a little bit of gilded wax and then if I go, oh, too much Craig, if we go all the way round, you can see from up above, so the impression from the foil press stamp has then been pushed into the cardstock, not enough for it to actually cut but what it does do is it gives you that impression that you can come along with your waxes, gilding waxes, anything like that, and then you can uh, wax onto. That's great. So turning all those full stamp dies yes. almost into embossing folders as well, which is fantastic. Karen has sent a picture in for us, Craig, of uh, your fantastic craft along, and she's nailed it. She's done it as an easel here. Wow. Wow, wow, How wow. How awesome wow. is that? That is absolutely spectacular. Love the fact that you've used a different one of the Happy Birthday Special Friends, but you've created an easel, you've added the, but I just, wow. All of them that you've been sending in are so fantastic. They really are. I'd like to go back through the solid sentiment stamps that, uh, stamp dies that Craig used to create that craft along. Uh, you're going to get four in here. This one is Celebrate that you've got. Really awesome size. And what they normally, with a foil stamp die, right, what has happened is you'd, so you'd foil the sentiment, i.e. with this one, right, where it's a Celebrate, that would be foiled and the rest wouldn't be. But with these, it's the opposite. They kind of create what would be the negative. So it means if you like loads of foiling on your projects, then these are going to give it to you. How awesome does that look with the foil onto the foil I think foil onto mirror I think it's a really awesome technique so you've also got uh, especially for you in here which is the one that Craig used in that craft along and we've got thank you in there too which is brilliant and I love this project that's been done here using that how incredible is that a really really uh, awesome look 
and effect there uh, with those, which is brilliant. Now we're going to go back to the monograms, which are these ones just over here. Let me give you an example of some of the things that you can do with these. So again, Charlie, changing the colour way up, completely changing uh, the background, you'll get something really different with these, but these give you this sentiment that you can see here. So uh, is this the right one, Johnny? Am I, I've got the wrong one, haven't I? This is not the monogram. That is the that is not the right one, is it? Let me get you that one. There we go. I just realised when I was halfway through. Uh, so these are the monograms here. Now, uh, you will need some sort of uh, numbers or um, alphabets if you want to use them. Or well, you don't have to. You can just use them as gorgeous frames if you want to. I'll go through what you're going to get in here. You're going to get the hex frame, the geometric frame, the classic plaque. There's also, this is my favourite one, the confetti explosion. I think that's awesome. Then you have the grande frame, which is that one there. The laurel reef, which is beautiful. And also, finally, the eleganza, the elegance there. £36 or $60 if you wanted to get a hold of those. Now, I said I was desperate to show you the expressions, wasn't I? I mean, I really wanted to show you. Should we go back there and show you those? Uh, so the expressions, are yes, these are the ones that are going to put this sentiment on here, which is awesome. So what we've then got is the, so I'll go through the sentiments that are in here. You've got wedding, congratulations, RSVP, happy birthday, special friend, party, invitation, and you're also going to get a save the date as well. So really useful uh, when it comes to the kind of projects that you want to go through. Now, let's go back to, while we're here, those fantastic stamp and cut dies. Loads of you checking out your basket. It's very, very busy over on the website. This is what they look like. So this is how they come to you. They are stamp and cut and they are a creator card die. So they really are sort of premium top end when it comes to what we offer you with our foil stamp and cut dies. Let me show you the examples of what you're going to be able to create with these. So you've got here your Baroque foil stamp and cut die, which are these ones. You're also going to get this one, which is your butterflies and blooms. This here is your Art Deco, which is fantastic. Really love that one. And you've got in here also the Art Nouveau, which is brilliant. So do grab those. £59 or $71 if you want to get those. $47.20 or $56.60 as a Club Inspire Platinum member. Now, we also had for you the Stag Collection. These are your foiling essentials in here. So the Stag is awesome. Uh, you're going to get that foil stamp die there in that collection. And you're then getting also uh, the natural, neutral tones in the textured 12 by 12 cardstock. And it is a cardstock weight. This is 230 GSM, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, so do grab that. And then also in there, you're getting then that gold spangle. That's only recently been made available in the UK. So do grab that. Will it be a lot of our UK viewers first chance to get hold of that? And you're getting the tape pen in there too. So absolutely loads in there for you, which is brilliant. Let's just go back over the machine itself because it is available for you. It's UK only uh, today. If you are in the UK, you can take advantage of it. It is brilliant. And what I love is, don't think of this like a new piece of kit. Think of this just as an extension of your Gemini or your Gemini Junior. If you're using the larger Gemini, you will want to go for the extender plate to pop it into the larger Gemini. If you're using the Junior, it's all done to go straight in. You've got the um, base itself, you've got the platform, then you're getting your foil stamp and cut dies, your foil stamp stamp dies, you're getting all your accessories in here as well and the foil and you get also that uh, really super comprehensive manual in there which takes you through everything you need to know. Also remember that there are hours and hours and hours of foil press masterclasses available over on our website. You can go back and watch this craft along at any point over on our website as well. A website? Our website as well. Uh, so you can go back and watch hours and hours and hours of content whenever you want which is fantastic. Now don't forget it's also National Craft Month until the end of March. Every single day we're going to give away an awesome selection of goodies uh, and today's is this look at all of that Craig what an awesome selection that is phenomenal isn't it look at it all loads and loads stamps dies pads everything beautiful all you need to do is comment in one of our shows if you commented in this show or the wake up call or the craft fault you are already entered 
in with a chance of winning uh, as well. Uh, Craig, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this craft along with you. Thank you uh, very Do you much. want to give us one more look at your fabulous craft along? And then I think it needs to go on to the Cabinet of Creativity, Craig. I will do as well. Just say as well, that's not the only giveaway. You've still got a little bit of time to enter my giveaway across on my Facebook page. We will also announce the winner in the uh, Creative Cravens later on to celebrate 7,000 likes. This is what we've made within the craft along as well. And I'm going to do exactly what I've done on the last craft along. And that is I'm going to write up the instructions and put them on my Facebook page for you all to see. Because I know you said that would be a big help. And when I did do it, the response was uh, phenomenal. So I'm going to do that again. If not tonight, then tomorrow for you all to see. But that's what Absolutely we've done. Absolutely brilliant. Craig, can I say it was a pleasure as always to spend time Thank you, Joe. Uh, you with you in the studio. And the uh, Scotty Hotty takeover is not done, is it? What can we expect from our to show Craig? Uh, we are maybe some products that you've seen a few times but we're going to do a different take on them. Ooh. Look at them in different ways and see what we can do in different ways as well. Looking forward to it. Oh, well, make sure you join myself and Craig for that. Uh, you've only got one more show with me and then you get a rest. Well deserved. You've had five days to put up with me. Uh, so Ben will be here tomorrow for a few days. The lovely Rebecca uh, will be here as well. And then I, when will I be back with you then? I'll be back with you on Monday, uh, which will be awesome. It will fly by. Uh, but don't, don't miss out on that later um, Creative Craving show. One show where we take it a little bit back to basics as well. Should we do a craft clinic later as well, Craig? Let's do it. Let's All go right. for it. Brilliant. I wonder what happened to that lab coat. Hmm, let's see if we can find it. I don't know. Anyway, you've got a couple of hours now, so, I mean, you can do what you want. I mean, you are your own, you're your own boss. You do you, as I like to say, but make sure you're back here with us in two hours time. Don't forget to check out your baskets. We'll see you real soon.